as far as shaping the way that people's, people live, you write that the prevalence of women in the teaching sector is undergirded by a more complex issue. Teaching is seen as women's work. And uh, <clears throat> you write that uh, you, we should look at this as a feminist project because women, whether in paid employment or not, do the majority of the actual caregiving at home and in the community. This is reflected in how teachers are conceiving the strikes. A common theme among the strikers is that they're striking for their students. When asked why they were uh, asking for a 20% pay raise, Rebecca Gorelli, an Arizona teacher, framed it beautifully. Our working conditions are our students' learning conditions. How can the idea of women being caregivers be seen as empowering or liberating? And I'm just I'm just concerned about it being seen being potentially sexist, not coming from you. But I'm just saying, if you know, from my point of view, isn't viewing women as caregivers kind of the antithesis antithesis of feminism or what am I getting wrong about feminism? No, no, you're not getting that wrong about feminism at all. Yes. Women should not, uh, care is needed for a community, a family, a society to function, and women should not be the only ones responsible for it. Um, there should be a lot of money um, coming from the state to provide care in a, in a public way. So uh, in the sense of, you know, good pensions, good benefits, and free childcare, universal health care, Medicare for all, you know, that kind of thing are all part of the caregiving and the state should <laughs> bear a large uh, amount of responsibility for that. But beyond the state, uh, men and women should absolutely share in the care. So yes, it should never be just the task of women. The point here is, <laughs> is, is um, that currently, under our current um, situation, uh, women do provide um, Women are the majority caregivers, um, and this is wrong that they have to do the majority of the care work. But since they're doing it, the least that our lawmakers and our union leaders can do is to actually recognize that. Unless you recognize that, it can't be changed. So right now there is, an um, again, a invisibilization of women's work and 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 um, sort of there is no acknowledgement that uh, women do do most of the care work um, and you know places in the uh, sectors in the labor market uh, that are uh, sort of considered traditionally as care work such as nursing and and teaching uh, well I, and traditionally is the wrong word because these didn't used to be considered women's work previously as my article points out, but that has increasingly uh, been seen as uh, women's work. These sectors have been um, very selectively uh, uh, in, uh, underpaid and because a vast majority of um, workers in these sectors are women. And, um, and that is, I don't think that is accidental. Uh, the kind of misogynist um, arguments that have been coming from these um, governors of the state. So, for instance, West Virginia teachers were called dumb bummies um, so by their governor. And so these kind of things make it very clear that, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the right recognizes that it's women's work uh, in a misogynistic way and uh, sort of the left has failed to recognize the kind of um, the kind of pressure that women face by being the sole caregivers, both in the workplace and at home. In the context of the teacher strike, I think um, this was reflected in two ways. One, because in communities, uh, women often are sort of more active in the community and, and building sort of social ties, social relations, going to coffee meetings with their church groups and so on. So once the strike started, uh, you know, a quick, a very quick network of social support was built almost immediately to support the teachers. And these were 
these were community organizations, churches, um, social uh, groups that came out immediately because these women who were teachers were not just teachers. They were church members. They went to these coffee meetings and so on uh, when they were not teaching. So these groups now came out quite quickly in support of, of the strike. And the care issue is very relevant because women end up being the majority caregivers. And the women are sort of um, uh, trained in a way um, to think in a particular way. So if, you know, um, I get invited to dinner I or I get invited to a conference to speak, my first thought is, uh, what about childcare that day? Okay, so these women who've been working so closely with their uh, students, when they decided to go on strike, their first thought was, you know, from a vast majority of my students, school is more than just education. This is where they get their only hot meal of the day. This is where they interact um, with other students. So it's a social world, and it's a stable social world for many of my students who come from trauma or really, really uh, hard sort of uh, family lives, challenging family experiences. So if we go on strike, we are taking that away from our students, and we can't do that. So immediately when these strikes have started, if you go through all of the um, strike um, uh, uh, sites, you know, from West Virginia to Kentucky to Arizona, uh, women have worked um, very consciously to involve church groups to serve hot meals during the strike, has involved parents groups to, um, you know, sort of um, help with the picket lines. Sometimes in West Virginia, women strikers have carried food to the houses of the students. I mean, because it's a small state, it can be done. You know, so this was an amazing consciousness um, of uh, women who were leading the strike, but leading the strike not just in a workplace kind of way, but in a deeply social way. They were thinking of society in totality, not just in the workplace. And so this is, I think, very, very significant um, that uh, women are, uh, that uh, happens, this kind of thing happens because primarily women are leading these strikes and are their main um, participants. 